George Lucas gave us Star Wars, Indiana Jones, Lucasfilm, and even VFX giant Industrial Light and Magic. He wrote, produced, and directed fantastical things that millions of fans still rave about today. Still, over the last three decades, he's had some really weird moments. As much as we love him, we admit that he can be a bit obnoxious. So today, we're looking at 10 George Lucas moments that made us go WTF. Starting with number 10, his speech against film alterations in 1988. You've probably heard of the National Film Registry, right? It was founded in 1988 on the request of multiple filmmakers, which included Martin Scorsese, Steven Spielberg, and George Lucas. Back in the 80s, Hollywood had a bunch of copyright holders of classic films colorizing black and white movies, but the filmmakers were totally against that. Why would you alter art after it's created instead of respectfully and carefully preserving it? Right, George? Yeah, the irony isn't lost on us either. In fact, he made a passionate speech to Congress about altering classic films, claiming that anyone changing the films for their own gain was a barbarian. He even called it a crime against the culture of humanity. Well, fast forward nine years later, the man made countless changes to the original Star Wars trilogy. We don't know about you, but sounds like the pot was calling the kettle black all along. Fans were against the changes, obviously, but old George didn't care very much. Coming in at number nine, the interview on The Daily Show. You don't really see old George committing to many TV interviews. He's just not as prolific as he used to be back in the day. So when he did make an appearance on The Daily Show in early 2010, fans were excited. They wanted to know what he had to say about the prequels, the last of which was released way back in 2005. But instead of acknowledging the problems with the prequels, he instead suggested that the fandom were simply caught up in nostalgia and didn't appreciate the new trilogy for what it was. Well, you could make an argument about sky-high expectations. Fans were beyond hyped for the prequels and were really let down. Don't get us wrong, the prequels have the best meme material out of all the Star Wars movies and TV shows ever made. Revenge of the Sith has some of the best lightsaber duels we've ever seen. But all of that couldn't save fans from Jar Jar Binks, or the CGI Overload, or Padme dying of a broken heart, which made no narrative sense. No, George, nostalgia isn't the reason fans hated the prequels. It was much deeper than that, and you know it. At number 8, it's the overuse of CGI in the Star Wars prequels. George should have pulled a James Cameron and just waited for the technology to catch up with his vision for the prequels. Fans loved the original trilogy for its practical approach to special effects. We highlighted one of the problems with the prequels a few seconds ago. They were ripping at the seams with CGI, and George thought more was obviously better. Remember the scene where Anakin and Padme are sharing a pair together? The reason it looked so awful was because the pair was entirely CGI. Natalie Portman was pretending to eat nothing, and the poor VFX artist who worked on the scene had to make it as realistic as possible, except the prequels don't hold up, do they? There are some shots that look phenomenal, especially the pod race from The Phantom Menace, but nearly everything feels artificial and uninspired. The world of Star Wars used to be gritty, realistic, and practically made, but George's decision to make the prequels driven entirely by CGI put fans in a digital hellscape. Next is number 7, George's rant about the black film industry. Back in the 2000s and early 2010s, Hollywood didn't invest a lot of money in movies or TV shows with predominantly black casts. George acknowledged it in an interview with USA Today back in 2012, but instead of being compassionate about the situation, he went on a self-indulgent rant. He'd been working on Red Tails for about 23 years at that point, and financed the entire movie himself through Lucasfilm. But despite his good intentions about promoting a true story about the Tuskegee Airmen in World War II, George made it about himself. In the interview, he said that he put the black film community at risk because Red Tails cost $58 million of his own money. If the movie didn't work, the black film community would be stuck with low budgets because Hollywood wouldn't shell out big budgets for future black-led movies. If it did work out, then George would break the mold. But here's the thing. Think like a man had an all-black cast, a $12 million budget, and made more money than Red Tails. 12 Years a Slave came out a year later, had a $20 million budget, and made over $187 million at the box office. So, you know, the black film community was never at risk, despite what George said in his interview. At number 6, it's blaming the fans for the end of Star Wars in 2012. The news that Lucas was retiring from filmmaking was heartbreaking. He's now no longer involved in making more Star Wars movies, which we honestly miss. Part of what made the Star Wars universe so unique is his creativity. But then he turned around and said that the reason why he was leaving was because of angry fans everywhere. Yes, there's a subset of highly toxic fans on the internet that gatekeep Star Wars from newcomers and people of color. However, that wasn't the right thing to say, especially when you realize that the criticism aimed at the prequels and altering the originals was justified. Coming in at number 5, Lucas phased out the theatrical version of THX 1138. Before A New Hope, George rose to Hollywood prominence with THX 1138, his first feature film. It's a dystopian thriller where humans aren't allowed to reproduce or feel emotions, and the population is controlled by an android police. The 1971 theatrical cut was perfect and left you satisfied with what you'd just seen. So, of course, George Lucas would fiddle
with it, just like the original Star Wars trilogy. THX 1138 got a digital makeover for its 2004 Director's Cut release. George commissioned ILM and Lowry Digital to restore the film and add CGI shots in it. Restoring audio and video is one thing, but adding CGI shots to make it more modernized is another. For a guy who campaigned for the National Film Registry, George really wanted to change his own art instead of preserving it, eh? But the worst thing is, you can't even find the theatrical cut anymore. The 2004 Director's Cut is the only one available, making it the definitive one. It's like Rockstar taking the original GTA trilogy off their stores and replacing them with the definitive versions. It's just wrong. Next is The Kingdom of the Crystal Skull at number 4. We're honestly so grateful that Spielberg and Lucas got together to make Raiders of the Lost Ark. It was an action-adventure nerd's dream, filled with practical sets, high-octane stunts, and a thrilling story. The next two sequels were more of the same, but then came The Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. This is where the charm of the original broke down, and fans everywhere were disappointed. The thing is, it wasn't a bad movie, but that's not the threshold we want to have for an Indiana Jones movie. The bar should be higher than that, and not a CGI monkey fest. Even though it was directed by Spielberg, the story was all Lucas, and it looked like he didn't learn anything from making the prequels. At number 3, it's 1986's Howard the Duck. We know what you're gonna say. George was the executive producer, and he didn't direct or write this nightmare-inducing hell monster. But did you know that the movie could have been animated instead of the live-action mess it was? You have Lucas to thank for that decision. Let's just say, if you haven't watched Howard the Duck, then consider yourself lucky. Guardians of the Galaxy brought back Howard the Duck, and they did it because the CGI could pull it off. But back in 1986, ILM made a realistic-looking duck puppet that looked like it was straight out of Five Nights at Freddy's. Just no. In the second spot, it's Jar Jar Binks. You know how most directors have dreams about the movies they make? James Cameron had a dream about a killer robot emerging from a fire, which became the basis for the original Terminator. And Lucas has claimed in several interviews that the idea of Star Wars came to him in a dream as well, including Darth Maul. Darth Maul was one of the most badass characters ever, but what in the world was Lucas smoking when he thought of Jar Jar Binks? The character has racist undertones, too much screen time, and terrible CGI. The fact that they had a real actor, Ahmed Best, under a $100,000 prosthetic suit makes it even worse. Finally, number one, altering the Star Wars trilogy and phasing out the originals. The original trilogy had a special place in the hearts of Star Wars fans. The practical special effects, the handmade costumes, the meticulously crafted set designs. That's what made them so charming. CGI isn't terrible, of course, but it's a tool just like lighting and props. Too much and it'll remove the audience from the immersion. Too little and the practical effects might look a bit dull on their own. That's why fans get so riled up when it comes to altering the OG trilogy. Back in 97, Lucas started releasing special edition versions of the trilogy, which included additional footage that wasn't really needed and extra CGI shots. One of the ways this ruins Return of the Jedi, for example, is right at the end when Luke sees the Force ghosts of Anakin, Yoda, and Obi-Wan. Originally, Sebastian Shaw, who played Vader, was Anakin's Force ghost, but now, the special edition puts Hayden Christensen in there like he was there the whole time. That makes no sense, and the original was just fine on its own. But that's not even the worst part. George decided that the special editions are the only versions fans need, instead of, you know, giving fans both versions so they can choose for themselves. But we can't pick and choose what we love about Star Wars anymore. It is what it is, and we'll always be grateful to George Lucas for creating the Star Wars legacy in the first place. And that's a wrap, folks. Thanks for watching. So which Lucas moment did you find most obnoxious? Tell us down below. And as always, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more videos in the future. See you in the next one.